Hello, I'm Dr. Shah. Recently, there have been some terrible accidents at the racetrack resulting in drivers receiving concussions. As a neurosurgeon at Princeton Brain and Spine Care, I have been asked to discuss what you want to know and what you need to know about concussions. So let's get started. Why are concussions so important? Over 1.5 million people receive traumatic brain injuries per year. Over 75% of them are actually concussions. 50,000 people actually die. So, I have two questions for you. First, do you know what the leading cause of concussions is? It's actually people falling off of bicycles. It's amazing that even a small fall leading to a very small hit can lead to a very major problem. Second question, out of every 10 concussions we see, how many do you think actually lose consciousness? Well, it's actually just one. The biggest myth we see as healthcare providers is that you have to actually lose consciousness in order to be defined as having a concussion. Well, that's plain wrong. The bottom line is, it doesn't have to be a hard hit like in football or hockey. It can be a minor incident like a slip or fall in the kitchen. The two most important factors in concussion care are how to diagnose a concussion and how to treat a concussion. Those two factors alone will predominantly determine the outcomes of these patients. In order to really understand concussions, you have to understand the anatomy of the brain. Think of your brain as a computer, as your own personal computer. The brain is a soft structure which contains the neurons, which are vital aspects to the functioning of thinking, breathing, and eating. Essentially, the fundamentals of life. They are contained within the hard structure called the skull. When a brain gets injured, it can slosh around in that hard skull. And that can cause an injury to that internal functioning. We all understand that sickening feeling we get when we drop our laptop on the ground and we know that there may be an internal injury even though we don't see any kind of outward signs of, of injury. The same thing happens with concussions where there is an internal malfunction within the hard skull. Does a concussion mean you are going to suffer permanent damage to your brain? The simple answer is no. As long as we can accurately diagnose a concussion and effectively manage a concussion, there is no need to worry about permanent damage. Two problems in the assessment of concussions are, number one, these people cannot even recognize that they have a concussion. And number two, they tend to ignore the symptoms of concussion in order to get back into the race or back into the job. Some simple questions you can ask someone in order to assess whether they have a concussion or not. Simply put, you want to ask questions that they can answer. You don't want to ask just simple yes or no questions like, are you okay? But you want to ask some specific questions that they can answer, like, where do they live? What year is it? What is their parent's name? What is their dog's name? These are all simple, easy, one or two or three word answers that any functional person should be able to answer. So let's say a person hits their head and goes home without recognizing a concussion. What are some things friends or family can look for in order to help recognize that a person has a concussion? Number one, look for loss of appetite. Number two, any feeling of dizziness or confusion. Number three, lack of attention. And number four, a feeling of sleepiness or abnormal tiredness. So after recognizing a concussion, now what do you do? The first thing you want to do is get this person to a healthcare professional in order to be fully evaluated. If the person lost consciousness in any way, that person should go immediately to the emergency room. Otherwise, the patient or person should go to a healthcare provider whether it be a primary care provider or preferably someone who is well versed in the brain and brain function, such as a neurosurgeon or neurologist. 
As a neurosurgeon, what medical advice do we give to manage concussions? Remember, a concussion is a brain injury, and the brain needs to rest in order to recover. That is the most important concept to understand. Rest will heal the brain, and if you injure the brain during the period of recovery, that's when we get catastrophic consequences and even death. These are very, very important concepts to remember. And remember, rest is the most important treatment to brain injuries such as concussions. We have an exciting new tool in the assessment and management of concussions. It is called the impact study. Prior to an event or an athletic season, an athlete would take this test in order to determine their reflexes and their thought processes as a baseline. If they were to have a concussion, we would take that test again and compare it to the previous. That gives us, as healthcare professionals, an objective standard in order to allow these athletes to return to sport. In summary, remember, concussions are real injuries. Un unlike a computer that malfunctions where you can return and get a new one, you can't get a new brain. So it's very important to diagnose and effectively treat a concussion. And the main thing is patience and rest. These are important concepts to take home, not only for yourself, but for your loved ones, in order to maintain a healthy and prosperous lifestyle. I'm Dr. Nirav Shah. It has been a privilege to discuss concussion care with you. If you have any concerns or questions, please feel free to call us at any time. 215-741-3141. We are neurosurgeons here at Princeton Brain and Spine Care, specializing in concussions related to sports injuries. In addition, you can visit our website at princetonbrainandspine.com. We are even more proud to announce a launch of a recent website called concussiondiscussion.org dedicated solely to the education of concussion care. Thank you again.